We do, however, ask that you agree to a simple waiver before you play. It's mostly just legal mumbo jumbo and isn't at all based on user experiences thus far or injuries associated with testing. Just touch the button to agree and then we can jump right into some harmless fun that can't harm you at all in any harmful way. Thank you for playing the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience. Hello everybody. How's it going? Today we have a theory about who I believe Tape Girl is, and if this is true, it's going to change some things regarding the lore of FNAF. Let's get into it, shall we? This isn't a mistake. This room isn't a mistake. First, we're going to start with Tape Girl's background. Tape Girl was a member of the dev team once responsible for developing the VR game, the Freddy Fazbear Virtual Experience, or as we call it, Help Wanted. We learn that Tape Girl has created 16 tapes containing her recorded logs about events that unfolded during her time working on the VR game. Also, in these tapes, we get details about Glistrap and how Tape Girl tried to put a stop to him. A big question regarding Tape Girl, however, is Tape 16. In this tape, she seems different, colder maybe, and for some reason she contradicts what she told us about Glistrap in previous tapes from not being able to destroy him, to now being able to destroy him. And? Well, that's it. Well, I mean, that's it for the clear-cut stuff, anyway. <laughs> it's not a whole lot, but if we read between the lines and look at the story within the story, we can piece together more, including her identity. As mentioned earlier, Tape Girl is a member of the dev team responsible for developing the VR game, and we know this because of Tape 3. I think it's made worse by the fact that Jeremy tried to tell us something was wrong, but as a dev team, we all just saw it as a challenge to find what the problem was and fix it. She says we as a dev team, thus including herself. So what was her job in the team? Well, it seems that she was a QA tester, because if we look at page 140 of the FNAF Ultimate Guidebook, it says, Many theories have popped up around the girl who made the secret tapes scattered throughout Help Wanted. The tapes seem to confirm that Tape Girl was a QA tester from the original game development team. As Tape Girl is in charge of testing the game after Jeremy, this does make sense. Also, for the credits of Help Wanted, Tape Girl is actually called QA. So that's also a point in the QA direction. Tape Girl being a QA tester is rather interesting because QA testers have an understanding of computer science for their jobs. And what else is computer science used in? Robotics. Now for the rest of this theory to make sense, I have to reveal who I believe Tape Girl is. I believe that Tape Girl is Charlie Emily from the novel series. And hear me out, because there's a lot that proves this. In robotics, computer science is used in the programming of robots, and in the Twisted Ones graphic novel, we see that Charlie is studying robotics in college, and that she has already invented two robot heads that talk to each other. This is what Charlie says about her creations. I'm not exactly programming them to do anything. I'm helping them to learn on their own. Notice how she says that she's not programming them to do anything, but she still did program them to learn on their own, proving that she has some knowledge of computer science. I believe that Charlie brought this knowledge over and implemented it into game development. And we can't ignore Tape Girl's similarities to Henry Emily from Pizzeria Simulator, as both use cassette tapes to record their messages. Henry is Charlie's father, making this connection make sense, as Charlie was given life by Henry's emotions. This would explain why Tape Girl chooses tapes over CDs, even though tapes should definitely have faded out of use by the time of Help Wanted. And in the Silver Eyes novel, we learn that Charlie chooses to keep her music on tapes instead of CDs, even though the series takes place around 1995, when CDs were commonplace, further explaining why Tape Girl would choose tapes over CDs. Both Tape Girl and Henry match in the way they speak, as both talk pretty long on their recordings, and in Tape 14, Tape Girl says a line that's similar to Henry's during his audio log in the Insanity ending. But hopefully, it also means that this anomaly, this virus, or whatever it is... It's only now that I understand the depth of the depravity of this 
creature, this monster that I unwillingly helped to create. Now for the final piece of evidence. We're going to have to look towards the Fazbear Fright story, Prankster. This story has references to the events that Tape Girl talks about in her logs, like Jeremy's face removal. Also, Prankster is one of two Fazbear Fright stories that Glitchtrap appears in, making this story have a strong connection to Help Wanted. The story of Prankster in a nutshell is about three characters, Jeremiah, Hope, and Parker, as they work for a failing company that gets bought out by Fazbear Entertainment and then are entrusted with developing a VR game for Fazbear Entertainment. I believe that the three characters in this story represent John, Charlie, and Carlton from the novel series, and here's why. Starting with Hope, she's described as a natural beauty with shoulder length hair and wide set, brown, doe-like eyes, which matches up with Charlie's appearance, how she doesn't wear much, if any makeup, has shoulder length hair and the twisted ones, and has brown, wide eyes. Also, when Jeremiah became a victim of a prank, Hope was seen giggling with her hand over her mouth. We actually see Charlie laughing like this twice in the graphic novel version of The Silver Eyes. Next is Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in love with Hope. This matches up with John and how he was in love with Charlie for a long time, as John tried to kiss Charlie when they were just six. Also, there is a scene where Jeremiah falls asleep on his couch while watching a late night talk show, then proceeds to dream about him and Hope on a date until he wakes up to his alarm with pain in his neck from sleeping on the couch in an awkward position. This is almost exactly what happened to John in the novel version of The Fourth Closet, where he was watching what sounded like a talk show as his TV was too blurry to see what was shown, until he fell asleep on his couch, where he then proceeds to dream about Charlie until he wakes up in pain with kinks in his neck. I also should add that in Jeremiah's dream, Hope was wearing a rose-colored dress with a scoop neck that showed off her collarbones. This description is similar to what Circus Baby wore when she was pretending to be Charlie. And finally, Parker is a dedicated prankster, pranking Jeremiah multiple times. This aligns with Carlton, who plays pranks so often <laughs> that his father wasn't even concerned when he was told by Charlie and friends that Carlton was kidnapped. He just thought Carlton was playing a prank. Also, Parker's described by Jeremiah to have two styled hair, matching Carlton's description in the novel version of The Silver Eyes, where he's described of having hair that was carefully tousled and held in place by alchemical hair product. Because of these similarities, I believe that Prankster proves that there is an actual connection between the novel series and Help Wanted ultimately connecting Charlie to Tape Girl. And if this is true, then the ending of Prankster explains why Tape 16 is so different from all the other tapes. As we know, Tape 16 is the one where Tape Girl seems different and contradicts herself. Well, at the end of Prankster, there is a surprising moment where Hope and Parker are seen on a TV talking about the birthday surprise they made for Jeremiah. Then Parker and Hope talk about themselves as if they weren't really them. It was perfect, Parker said to Hope, then he turned to face the camera. But now that you've had your birthday surprise, there's a good chance that Hope and I need to get to a hospital. He grinned like a game show host. I bet we do, Hope said laughing. And for some reason, Parker in the scene calls to a second Parker. The smile faded from Parker's face. Okay, Parker, he yelled into the camera. He's ready. Give us a knock. After this, two knocks are heard from the supply closet near Jeremiah. Then Parker on the TV says, Now if you excuse us, Hope and I have some work to do. I believe that the Parker on the TV represents Glitchtrap, with Hope representing a corrupted Charlie. That's why Parker was described to have grinned like a game show host, because this is how William slash Dave smiles in the graphic novels. Charlie being corrupted explains why tape 16 contradicts the info in previous tapes, because Charlie was speaking under Glitchtrap's influence, and Charlie being taken over by the virus actually makes sense, since she is a robot and that would make it much easier for Glistrap to corrupt her. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Tell me what you think about this theory. 
does it hold true? Do you believe it? Or if you don't, why? I'm really curious to see what you guys think. And I know a lot of people don't believe that the FNAF books are canon, but if Tape Girl is Charlie, then the books have officially become a part of the canon. So like I said, let me know what you guys think. And as always, I hope you all have a lovely day. Until next time, peace. Moving through you, then use the disconnect switch that I've embedded by the main stage. Let it approach you. Let it begin to merge with you. Play the music and flip the switch. That will cause a hard restart of the game and flush the memory, effectively killing it. I hope. I don't know when it will come for you.